This morning we're joined by three young and passionate eco campaigners, Dan Adams, Amanda McKenzie and Aaron Wood. Good morning to you all. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Are you, are you fr frustrated at, uh, at uh, the government, the older generation, your parents' generation, uh, and their lack of w acting on this? I think we've been pretty frustrated with the debate at the moment. I think it's very short term. It's about what will it cost us now rather than what will it cost us in the future. It should be about how do we protect younger generations. But also you've got to look at the opportunity that exists. There's so many jobs to be made. Like um, Aaron's just been overseas and looking at the green economy that's expanding all over the world. Huge. And so there's just so many jobs to be made as well as money to be made all over the world and Australia will really get left behind so... OK, so the, does the government get it? Bear in mind your trip recently, does our government get it? And so in terms of what, what the youth are contributing, I mean, is, are there enough avenues for a young voice to get in there and actually say what needs to be said? Well, I think that the youth voice has really been left out of the debate. Um, I currently. think so too. And it's a real shame because young people have a lot to bring to the debate. I think both they are the ones that are going to be affected in the future, but at the same time also I think a spirit of idealism, of a vision yes. of what can the world look like and what yes. do we want it to look like. That sort of passion and enthusiasm is what we need to really turn us around, steer us on a new course. And we need to have that encouragement in universities, don't we? Yep. Money needs to be spent in universities. Well, that's a really important point, actually, is that young people don't have the opportunities to get skilled in yes. what we need for the new economy. So there really needs to be a change in both schools, universities, TAFEs, to make sure that young people are going to have the right skills to implement all the changes that we need. They're young, they're smart, enthusiastic and keen and they're utterly frustrated with our hesitance to turn green. We're old, we're slow, polluting earth and sky, but fear not, all will be fixed by Generation Y. That was a good one. The Garno <laughs> Review draft report has been at the top of the agenda this week, but a youthful voice on the issue seems to have been lost somewhere in the debate. This morning we're joined by three young and passionate eco-campaigners, Dan Adams, Amanda McKenzie and Aaron Wood. Good morning to you all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. How important is this issue to, let's say, let's call you the younger generation? How important is it? Well, you've got a lot being called the younger generation for starters. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. It's the number one issue for us. Um, you know, it's. I guess it's it's not a, 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 a difficult thing to see that we're the ones that are going to really see the problem. So, you know, we're looking at a future which which isn't secure at the moment, which isn't bright, which isn't happy. So that's what we're worried about. Are you are you fr frustrated at uh, at uh, the government, the older generation, your parents' generation, uh, and their lack of w acting on this? I think we've been pretty frustrated with the debate at the moment. I think it's very short term. It's about what will it cost us now rather than what will it cost us in the future. It should be about how do we protect younger generations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but are Australians prepared to pay more for electricity in the short and term? I, and I think that's the, the major challenge is that there's this real generational time lag. You know, we need to, to pay now and the benefits are in so 30 years away. It's that balance so of equity that you've exactly. spoken about before, and it's, isn't it? It's, I guess it's young people that are, that are going to see the benefits of it, but it's the generation making decisions that are going to see the cost, and that makes it pretty, pretty difficult in, in, the, in the short term. So we're being tired about what's going to ultimately affect you more than us, yeah, because you'll be around longer. Yeah, we say. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, not an easy thing, no. It's not, I mean, you know, the CSIRO report, $8 a litre we're looking at for petrol, you know, in the very short future. Um, so, look, this is, no one's willing to put their hands in their pockets when they can't see the immediate impact. So I guess it's mm. about trying to really show people that this is happening to us right now. It's happening through rural Australia. The Murray-Darling Basin is, is a clear example of where a cap has actually failed. Yeah. The Coorong's dying. Yeah. I mean, this how is... Do you, well, you see, how do you, as, as, as people of your age, how do you go up to some guy who's an executive of a, a, an energy company and say, listen, mate, uh, you've got to find another way of doing this? How do you, how do you sell that to these guys? I think it's a. I think it's a pretty compelling argument, really. I think if you if you look at you know um, coal industry complaining about loss of loss of profits, and then you can you contrast that against you know loss of a future of generations of Australians and young people around the world. Um, you know, it's it's a pretty compelling argument. It's pretty it's pretty hard to to, to argue that. Yeah, <laughs> but also you've got to look at the opportunity that exists. There's so many jobs to be made. Like um, Aaron's just been overseas and looking at the green economy that's expanding all over the world. Huge. 
So there's just so many jobs to be made as well as money to be made all over the world and Australia will really get left behind, so... OK, so the, does the government get it? Bear in mind your trip recently, does our government get it? I mean, a, certainly the last government was accused of not getting it. Yeah, look, I mean, we spent ten years in the wilderness there, really, didn't we? <laughs> I think, um, you know, and that's sort of no pun intended, well, I guess. <laughs> But, um, you know, I, I think this government gets it, but this is a really difficult thing. I mean, you look at um, Professor Ross Garneau, the, the economist, who's, who's recently released some of his early findings. He's a guy that's trying to find a solution. He's being lambasted by the, the Green Left, lambasted by the, the, the coal-fired power companies, and, and all he's trying to do is actually find a solution. I'd say, given he's being lambasted by both those sides, he's not far off actually finding the mainstream solution. I was going to say, is, is he on the right track? Yes. I think so. An emissions trading scheme by 2010, well, he wants to implement a, a, a two-year kind of start-up period. Is, is that soon enough? Is that the right way to go? I think so. I think, um, you know, this is, this is something that, that we, need to, we need to address, you know, as soon as we can. The, the time, you know, as Ross said, um, delaying a decision is, is not postponing it, it's making a decision not to act because the urgency is, is here. Mm -hmm. It's a good point. Um, and so in terms of what, what the youth are contributing, I mean, is, are there enough avenues for a young voice to get in there and actually say what needs to be said? Well, I think that the youth voice has really been left out of the debate. Um, I currently. think so too. And it's a real shame because young people have a lot to bring to the debate. I think both they are the ones that are going to be affected in the future, but at the same time also I think a spirit of idealism, of a vision yes. of what can the world look like and what yes. do we want it to look like. That sort of passion and enthusiasm is what we need to really turn us around, steer us on a new course. Yeah, I think that our generation, or you, perhaps your parents' generation, see this as doom and gloom. I mean, do, Absolutely. do you guys see this as doom and gloom? Or yeah. Do you, or can, is there a challenge to be excited about? I think there's a, a massive challenge to be excited about and this is, I, I, I was sort of thinking about what this argument is about and we're trying to perfect the system before even doing anything. So we're saying let's get it absolutely perfect before we do anything at all and, and I think that, look, this is a state of emergency, let's not deny it, we're really in, in a state of emergency and in that kind of emergency I don't mind someone plugging the damn wall with their finger as long as they've got the plumber on the way to actually fix the whole exactly, thing. So, yeah. so let's, let's get it in there, let's yeah. get it happening and, and like Amanda said, this huge green economy is unbelievable, $763 billion on all alternative energy for China, um, $300 million a year off the bottom line for Interface Carpet Company. I mean, these are huge dollars we're talking about. Let's get in there and let's earn them. But well, you know, we've seen in the New York Stock, Stock Exchange this incredible rise in green investment already, you yeah. know, but we just need to get on board too. But we, we, we talk about this, uh, Organo talks about this emissions trading scheme and the government talks about this emissions trading scheme, but the point is, is there a point in us implementing an emissions trading scheme when we can't get China and we can't get India, the major massive polluters of this world, on, on board. I, I mean, think, what do we do about that? I think the, the, you know, the most we've got to give to this is to lead by example. The only way that those developing countries are going to get on board is if all the developed countries act. And I think the most Australia can to, to, to contribute is, is to, to lead ourselves and to go as far as we can. And, it, and as Ross said um, in his latest report, um, you know, Australia is the developed country that's going to be most affected by climate change. Yes. Um, and therefore it makes, it makes a lot of sense for us to try and get the world to go as far as we possibly can. Self-interest is a beautiful thing, I think. You know, and as Dan says, you know, we're the most impacted country and we've got the most to gain from it. Again, this green economy we've got to come back to. But mm. on that, you know, it's an easy to say, look, China and India and these guys, if we don't bring them on board, we're not going to see the change we need to see. Exactly. But yet, come back to it, we're still the highest emitters per capita in yes, the world. Yes, yes, That's yes. right. Us in still, the US. And we need to and have that encouragement in universities, don't we? Yep. Money yeah. needs to be spent in universities. Well, that's a really important point, actually, is that young people don't have the opportunities to get skilled in yes. what we need for the new economy. So there really needs to be a change in both schools, universities, TAFEs, to make sure that young people are going to have the right skills to implement all the changes that we need. Yeah. That's a good point. If we think the skill shortage with labour and the trades at the moment is big, watch this space for the skills shortage with the green mm. economy. It's going to be absolutely huge. Mm. All right, look, we've, we're out of time. Terrific yeah. to have you on. Thank you Thank for your time. You so Thank you so much. See you again, yeah. We'll be back after this.